anticipating that that time would be accepted insha'Allah Nothing is guaranteed in life If everything was guaranteed then we're not living on earth, we're living in heaven So These final ajza of the Qur'an Will continue to drive home A holistic message That by now after the groundwork and the framework is complete we have to take into consideration Tonight, the 26th June, covers Surah Ahqaf, Surah Muhammad, Surah Fath, Al -Fath and uh, Surah Hajarat, Surah Qaf, and Surah Dariya Five points, inshallah, to take away tonight, in a short time قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ In Surah Ahqaf, a repetitive excuse given by people who disbelieve in the message of Allah it's magic it's made up it's it was for a certain time the most destructive in my opinion sentence that we can utter that opens a can of worms if the Prophet Muhammad was here he would you understand my sentence? We look down on the religion so much that we can claim if Muhammad was here now, he would have he would have watched TV also. Yeah, was it is it an LG or a Samsung? Tell me which one. I love to buy the same TV he watches. Yeah, he would have done that also. If Muhammad Sallallahu was here, he would have wore clothing like this. Who are we? Who are we to talk like this? It is dangerous. It mimics exactly what Allah said in the Quran. In hadha illa sihr mubin. It's only magic. It's okay. Let it go. What were the obstacles at that time? You were already plunged into misery. Quraysh were not having a good time, they were miserable people Life in the area was miserable And when something good came to them, what they're saying We'd rather stay miserable In hadha illa sihru mubin, it's only magic Live on in your misery So my question tonight is, how more miserable do we need to get as an ummah and as a people before we embrace the truth? We know the truth, we believe in the truth I'm not questioning anyone's Islam here, I'm saying When will we embrace the truth? Because the one thing Allah points out Is that when you have reservation To the word of Allah and the word of Muhammad and Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You haven't got there yet And that's what Allah says in verse number 13 qalu rabbuna Allah the state that we want to obtain, the state of bliss Is like a pilot flying a plane full of passengers in turbulent air You need to seek out that level Is it 18? Is it 28? Is it 32? Is it 36,000? What is the level that you need to get to where you can find smooth air? Our planes are shaking violently right now and we're like, we're just going to stay here your, your map, your GPS, your computer systems are telling you This is not the level, move up a bit, go down a bit But no, I'm just going to stay here Allah saying, those who say our Lord is Allah And they stay steadfast on that that if Allah says this, I'm doing it If Allah says that, I'm doing that I'm not doing what I want to do how do you know your faith is strong? فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Ask yourself tonight a simple question If I am to die right now Right now Will I have a remorse? Will I have fear? Will I fear what's coming? Will I regret what happened behind? Will I worry about my family and my properties? Or am I fully content with what I did and I'm fully ready for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If that state has not been obtained, you have seven more days inshallah to do it. Say inshallah. We have to. 
We have to live without the baggage of the unknown. We are being told in these last ajda of the Quran, know the unknown more than you know the known. Know the akhirah in qiyamah, in jannah, in jahannam more than you know this world. Know it because it's happening. The more you know it, the less you'll fear it. And the more you're connected with Allah, the most you'll, the less you'll fear or grieve what you're going to be leaving behind. We move on to Surah Muhammad. In verse number 2, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a very, very clear cut distinction which for some reason in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu today there's some confusion. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَآمَنُوا بِمَا نُزِّلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَهُوَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ كَفَّرَ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَأَصْلَحَ بَالَهُمْ we bring faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes or no? We bring faith in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. Yes or no? That means we reveal the whole package. The Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu The Hadith was also revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu No, Angel Jabil didn't come down with Bukhari. وَمَا يَنْفِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ The Prophet ﷺ never spoke from his own. Every word he uttered was a revelation. What he said to his wives was a revelation. What he said to his community was a revelation. When he asked about the cleaner of the masjid who died, that was revelation. When he stood up and he prayed her janazah, it was revelation. There were scribes who were writing the Qur'an and there were scribes who were compiling the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad And when the hadith compilation was raw, from there we extracted the seerah, from there we extracted fiqh. Everything came from the hadith. The Qur'an was the nucleus of the revelation. The Qur'an and hadith never got mixed up. Allah made sure the Qur'an stayed as the Qur'an and that's why Rasul did Dora of the Qur'an, revised the Qur'an every year with Jibreel and in his final year he revised it twice. So if you say that you believe in Allah and then you say, sorry, you say we say we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we do righteous deeds, that's half of the equation. Half. وَآمَنُوا بِمَا نُزِّلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَهُوَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ And we believe in what was given to Prophet Muhammad you can say that's the Qur'an, but what is Allah saying? آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ You bring faith on Allah and do righteous deeds, that's through the Qur'an. So Qur'an is also part of your faith. And the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is also part of our faith. The Qur'an tells us what to do, the Hadith teaches us how to do it. The Qur'an tells us what not to do, the Hadith tells us why not to do it. The Qur'an tells us of qualities that we should embed in our life, the Hadith tells us how to bring that into our life. It is a harmonious connection. They are intertwined like the fabric that you're wearing. Threads intertwined to make it a strong fabric. The promise of forgiveness of sins and rectification and upholding our families is given in this verse in Surah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in Surah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he gives the example of paradise. You know the one thing that this world cannot survive without is water. We are already living in an age, if you don't know, that our water is becoming highly contaminated. But more than water, the concern right now is air pollution. It is so bad that people are dying now in places like Europe and India and other places because the air quality is so bad. It's toxic, it's destructive, it's fatal. Water. No water, no coke. No water, no juice. No water, no chai. No water, goodbye Starbucks. No water, it should be Fiji, hopefully there's still Fiji water, but it's gone. Water is the base. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ Allah says from water we gave life to everything. Everything had a form of liquid to it. In this earth, water 
is a very important resource. Do you all agree? Allah subhanahu is promising in Jannah the different types of liquids that the people of Jannah will be blessed with. Say inshallah, we want to be part of them inshallah. مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ Allah is saying, let me give you an example of the paradise that's been promised to the God-fearing ones. He's giving us an example. فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ مِّن مَّاءٍ غَيْرِ آسٍ There is rivers of water and it doesn't smell. The smell of the water is gone. The taste of the water is pure. It's crisp. It's refreshing. The color of it is clear. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّن لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيِّرْ طَعْمُ And rivers of milk that the taste doesn't go bad. The milk will be pure. It will continue to be pure. It's not going to go bad. If you want to know if God exists, if Allah exists, look at two creations that Allah points out in the Holy Quran. The honey bee that does so much work for us. The pollination and the production of honey. How is it possible? This is a creature from which Allah is divinely giving us this, this blessing of honey. You look at the cow. You follow the cow in its stomach. Literally you'll see blood and all of a sudden there's a conversion. It's white as milk. Where is that happening? Allah is doing it. If you cut open the teeth of a cow or the udder of a cow, you try to find milk. It's not there. Milk is coming from Allah's treasured brothers and sisters. Look at that animal and understand that Allah's treasures is giving you something in this world. We take it for granted, right? Cheerios and Fruit Loops and 2% milk and coconut milk and almond milk and I don't know how many milks are out there. What's the next thing we're going to milk? Pistachios? I don't know. Cashew milk? Cow's milk? Whatever it is, in its original essence, in its unaltered way, it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa A person may say, I can't drink milk. I had that problem. I was lactose intolerant for a long time. But it's what they do to the milk that makes it such that you can't drink it. The milk that comes from Allah's treasure is pure. So Jannah will have pure water, pure milk, the taste will not go bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khamrin There's going to be rivers of khamr, of wine, that are going to, it's, the taste is going to bring pleasure to those who drink it. Ever on a plate or somewhere where they serve alcohol, my personal take, it stinks. It smells so bad. I don't think it tastes any good. But it's a status symbol. You drink. People drink, you drink. Johnny Walker, whatever else. People drink, drink. Khamar of Jannah is pure. Food in Jannah is pleasure. Don't make this world your pleasure. The food in this world is a necessity. The food tomorrow will be pleasure. You will eat for the fun of eating. You don't have to. Your stomach's not going to be growling and say, I need to go eat. It's pleasure. You're going to eat for pleasure. And you'll drink for pleasure. There will be khamar. There will be wine. The wine of Jannah. The world cannot make the wine of Jannah. And there is going to be taste in it that will bring happiness to the person who drinks it. And there's going to be rivers of honey that flow pure and clean. It's not going to be foggy, it's not going to have the honeycomb, it's going to be pure honey. Brothers and sisters, I ask you one thing tonight. Start dreaming about paradise. Advertisement makes us dream about the world. You get out of your car, you see that billboard, oh that new car, the Toyota Supra is coming out. Man, I wish I could have that car. Uh, how many horses does that one have? We just look at things, we dream about the world. The new phone is coming out. The new, the new designer wear has been launched for spring collection or the fall collection. That's always looking at it. And what happens is your mind is occupied thinking about the world. 
take these nights of Ramadan and dream about Jannah. Because you know what? Fact is, when you dream about something, you aspire for it. When you aspire for it, you work towards it. Aspire for paradise. Dream about paradise. At home, once a week and on the table, sit down and talk about paradise. Ask your children simple questions. What do you want to have in paradise? Don't come up with a conversation, I don't know if we're going to go to paradise, we have to make Tawbah and Istighfar and we maybe go to paradise. Start dreaming about it. Your name is written on a door of paradise. And your name is written on a door of hell. Remember this. Everyone has our name written somewhere in heaven and hell. Those who go to Jannah, Allah may grant them double Jannah because someone who goes to hell may take double hell. Do you understand what I'm saying here? A person will go to hell and you will go to heaven, inshallah. They will take your hell and their hell. You will take your heaven and their heaven, inshallah. See, inshallah. Quran tells us about this stuff. You're going to get double and more. It's more and more than you can ever imagine. Start dreaming about it. Tell your children to draw things that they wanted to have in Jannah. If your daughter wants a flying pony, let her draw it. Let her think about it. Let them aspire for paradise. We don't talk about paradise. That's why we don't love getting close to Allah. There's no inclination. There's no motivation. And paradise is going to be the last step to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not paradise. We're going to go see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah. So understand this inshallah. Think about these things and talk about these things inshallah. Lastly, we have khatra today, right? It's khatra, thank you. I'll hold this one for the khatra inshallah. So as we understand that, let's not put our religion in such a weird spot that we write things off and we ask weird questions. Let us stay steadfast in our religion that we don't fear what's coming forward or grieve what we're going to leave behind. Let us believe in the entirety of what Allah sent, in the entirety of what the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam did. It is a combination of the Rasulullah and Allah. It is a combination of Quran and Hadith. This is our deen. Hold firm to the entirety of our deen and aspire for great ranks in paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us all in paradise together. Say Ameen. May Allah make us neighbors one to another in paradise. Ameen. May Allah allow us to pray together on Fridays and go visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enjoy food together. Go IHOP together. Eat pizza together. Have a coffee together in paradise, inshallah. Ameen. I'm not endorsing any of these products. Jazakallah khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar